His 1,908 yards rushing in one season ranks fourth best in NCAA history behind Marcus Allen, Mike Rozier, and Tony Dorsett, Heisman Trophy winners all. Add to this the experienced quarterback Dave Urema and his favorite receiver Mark Ingram, and the Spartans could challenge for the Big Ten title. But before they can think Big Ten, they must get past a very experienced Arizona State team led by quarterback Jeff Van Rapport and his great receiver Aaron Cox, a tandem that helped guide the Sun Devils into the Holiday Bowl. It should be an exciting duel tonight. Michigan State against Arizona State. Turner Network Television presents Super Football Saturday Night. Live from Tempe, Arizona, it's the Arizona State Sun Devils against the Spartans of Michigan State. Tonight's game is being brought to you by Budweiser. Beechwood age for that distinctively clean, crisp taste that makes Budweiser the king of beers. For all that you do, this Bud's for you. Hi again, everyone. Skip Carey, Archie Griffin with you from Sun Devil Stadium. It's scoreless, but from the 42-yard line, Kent Bostrom is about to try an Arizona State field goal. We're early in the first quarter. Chris Garrett is the holder, and the kick is up, but it's going to be short. It looked like Garrett may have bobbled the snap a little bit. Now I have flag on the play as well. Roughing the kicker has been called against Michigan State. So a big break for Arizona State. Michigan State had the ball first. Three plays accomplished nothing. They punted. Arizona State started at their 41, and they marched to a fourth and five at the 35, where the drive stalled, and you see the kick being missed. The kicker was rough, and that really kills the Spartans. It's 15 yards and a first and 10 at the 20 for the Sun Devils. That puts new life in the Sun Devil skip. So Jeff Van Rapport, the senior quarterback out of El Cajon, California, has another chance. There are the skill positions. Channing Williams, the fullback. Daryl Harris is the tailback. First and ten at the twenty. They shift down to the eye. Van Rapport wants to throw. Double pumps, has a man, complete at the 10. It's his flanker, Chris Garrett, out of St. Paul, Minnesota. Let's see if it was enough for a first down. Todd Crum ran him out of bounds. There's the young Michigan State defensive line. Shane Bullock, a heck of a player. When Arizona State get it, get in that uh, back formation, you can bet that they're going to pass the football. It is enough for a first down. First and ten at the ten. Just inside the ten. They can't get another first down. They can get it in the end zone, however. 10.53 remaining the first quarter. Bruce Hill checks into the game, replacing Chris Garrett. At flanker for the Sun Devils of Arizona State. First and ten from just inside the ten-yard line. Hill goes in motion to the ranks. The give is to the tailback. Daryl Harris fights his way close to the five-yard line. They'll mark it at the six, and it will be second and goal from there. Shane Buller made the stop. He's out of Cincinnati and out of Moeller High School. His dad, Hank, of course, the coach of the Buffalo Bills. And I thought... Garrett is back in there. He's split wide to the right. Cox, Aaron Cox, he's a good one to the left. The give is to Daryl Harris. He's at the five and the four, and that's it. David Wolf, who's there. the defensive right tackle, made the stop. There's the coach of Arizona State, John Cooper. It's third and goal from the four. Daryl Harris is going to have to have his running shoes on tonight because Coach Cooper wants to see if he can carry the load. Both tight ends, Jeff Gallimar and Stein Koss, check into the game for Arizona State. Garrett is flanked to the right. Comes in motion to the left. Van Rapport rolls right. He's got a man. Touchdown.
down to Gallimore. A four-yard pass to the tight end, and Arizona State takes the lead. Big Jeff Gallimore made the play. Here's a look at Gallimore and how he got free as his quarterback rolled. Boy, he could have... Must have felt like a deodorant breakdown. There was nobody near him. Nobody was anywhere near Jeff Gallimore. Jeff Garrett Gallimore will hold. Find the season. Excuse me, Archie. Garrett will hold. Bostrom will try to add the extra point. It is good. So Arizona State has taken the lead 7 nothing on a four-yard pass. And Michigan State will try to regroup. Seven nothing, Arizona State. Nine forty-four left, first half. Ten play, fifty-nine yard drive. It took four minutes, eighteen seconds. Sullivan comes forward. This boot not so good. Morris has it and got a hold, and he's to the thirty-five yard line before he's knocked out. De defensive back Brett Johnson made the stop for Arizona State. Lorenzo, Lorenzo White has not yet touched the ball, which is a bit of a surprise. You know that's going to change before the night is over. Archie Griffin and Skip Carey, will you? Mark in Ingram flanks right. Andre Reason splits left. Lorenzo for the first time, and he's got four to the 39-yard line. Inside linebacker Greg Clark out of Torrance, California, made the stop. There's George Perlis, the Michigan State head coach. Second down, six yards to go. If you can bet, we'll see a lot of that call sweep tonight. Richard Gusevich, the reserve tight end, checked in for Mike Sargent. For the Spartans, second down, six yards to go. Out of the eye. Ingram in motion. Lorenzo has it again. And he's stopped up at the 42. What? And a flag has been dropped in the backfield. Rick Zumwalt out of Huntington Beach, California, made the stop. There's the Arizona State defensive front four. The penalty is again against Michigan State. Our official. Uh, Tom Quinn, our referee, holding, as you heard, is the call. Walt Wolf is our umpire. The head linesman, Wayne Meese. Line judge, Howard Slavin. Field judge, Denny Freund. The side judge, Dan Spreesterbach. The back judge, James Fogelton. And the alternates. alternate is Lawrence Farina. It would have been third and three at the 42, but they're going to take the 10 yards. Back to the 32-yard line. John Cooper says the only way to really stop Lorenzo White is to just slow him down because he's going to gain a lot of yards on you, but they've got a gang tackle and keep leverage on him, and that's what they did on that last play. Second and 13 on the 32. Rising to the left, Ingram to the right. Davia Rima is the Michigan State quarterback. He rolls right. Throws back. He's got a little strain. Lorenzo White with it, but he is nailed at the 39. Greg Clark, an inside linebacker, made the stop for Arizona State. A gain of seven, but it's third and six at the 39-yard line. Here's a look from the end zone. Lorenzo knows that he's going to have a lot of company all night and all year. Greg Clark did a fine job on that. That's one of the inexperienced linebackers that Arizona State has, and uh, he feels that he can really prove himself tonight if he can make some big plays on Lorenzo White. Horizon, flank wide to the right. Ingram in motion again. They roll with the arena. They're going to do a lot of that tonight. He's got a man wide open. It's his fullback, Bobby Morris, but he gets nothing. He's hammered at the 40-yard line by Robbie Boyd, the rover back for the Sun Devils. 
He got perhaps a yard if that. And it will be fourth and five at the 40 yard line. And Greg Montgomery will come on to kick. Anthony Parker is deep for the Sun Devil. Greg Montgomery has a tendency to outkick his coverage. And Coach Cooper thinks that uh, Anthony Parker has a chance to return some big punts. There's a pretty good kick. Parker on the move, fields it at the 22, gets to the 35, and still on his feet to the 40, 45, 46 yard line. What a run. Mark Hill finally knocked him out of bounds, but a terrific return by Anthony Parker. This is Super Football Saturday night on Turner Network Television. First and 10 for Arizona State at their own 47-yard line. Archie Griffin, Skip Carey with you from Tempe, Arizona. Van Rapphorst is three out of four for 34 yards and a touchdown. Bruce Hill in motion to the left. He rolls to the left, does Van Rapphorst, and in and out of the hands of Aaron Cox. He doesn't drop many like that. He's perhaps their best wide receiver, but dropped passes really plagued Arizona State last year Todd Crum was there defensively but he was with Cox was covered very well by Todd Crum and I don't think the ref saw it but uh, Crum had a little bit of that face man three wideouts Channing Williams the fullback is the only man behind Van Rapport second 10 as you see Williams gets the ball and is tripped up from behind. Boy, he was a step away from important work. David Wolf made the stop. Channing Williams was the ball carrier. It is now third and nine. I'll make it third and nine on the 49. David Wolf did a good job of penetrating that offensive line and getting a hand on Channing Williams to trip him up. Chris Garrett flank left. Passing down out of the shotgun. Van Rappos get field some pressure. Runs away from the pressure and an interception is the result. It looked like Kurt Larson on the deflection who came up with it. He's out of Washaka, Wisconsin. Waukesha, Wisconsin. Right? This ball touched a lot of hands, as you're about to see. Fuller had it first. It was intended for Cox, and Larson wound up with it. And Rappos has been criticized for throwing in coverage, and he threw in the coverage right then. And then both teams did a juggling act, and Kurt Larson came up with the football. Great job of concentration by Kurt Larson. This is Super Football Saturday night on Turner Network Television. At the 35 yard line from Michigan State, they have not generated a first down yet. That was Kurt Larson. Uh, just intercepted the first pass of his career. Rising to the left, Ingram to the right. Morris and White behind Dave Urema. He rolls right again. Has plenty of time, throws into coverage, and incomplete. White and Ingram both were there and may, in fact, have lost each other up. Eric Allen was there defensively. We'll look at it again, Archie. One of the things that Coach Perlis wants to do is get Lorenzo White into more pass pattern. Here's his opportunity. The ball was thrown a little bit too high. Couldn't make the catch. Second and 10 at the 35. We have 637 remaining in the first quarter. Richard Gustavich. Replaces Mike Sargent at tight end once more. He's a sophomore at Gretzville, New York. Ryzen splits left. Ingram flanks right. High formation. The reverse comes to Ryzen. He gets one block. He gets to the 38. And that's all good coverage. They read it out nicely. Pat Shermer made the good block. But Ryzen was run out of bounds at about the 38 yard line. And so a third and seven will be the result. I think we'll see George Perlis pull out a lot of tricks today. Uh, he wants to get the attention away from Lorenzo White to give him more opportunity to run the football. Sergeant checks back in. Gusevich is up. There's George Perlis.
Eisen to the left, Ingram to the right. It's third and about seven. Good pressure, but he gets the pass away, complete to his tight end. Mike Sargent for a first down in Arizona State Territory in the 48-yard line. Sate Sapolo, the guy who put on a lot of pressure, but Yurima, nothing wrong with his intestinal fortitude. He just did get that away. First first down for the Spartans. That was great concentration by Yurima to get that football off. From the 49-yard line, it's 7-0 Arizona State. 6-10 left, first quarter. Horizon splits left. Sergeant in motion, Lorenzo Way. To 50 at the 46 yard line. Gains only three. Anthony Parker came up from the right corner to knock him out of bounds. Anthony Parker did a great job of stringing that play out, causing Lorenzo to go to the sideline, and then he just knocked him out of bounds. Second down and about seven at the 46 yard line. Lorenzo White has two rushes for six yards. It's, uh, Lorenzo, of course, is a Heisman Trophy candidate, and the only fella to ever win it twice is right here with me, Archie Griffin. He fakes to Lorenzo. He looks, he dumps it off. He's got a man at the 40-yard line. It's Lorenzo White, and he fights inside the 40, down to about the 38. Very close to a first down. Frank Rudolph made the stop. A 254-pound senior defensive end from Scottsdale. He's got the first down. We'll see Lorenzo being the dump-off man a lot today. That gives him an opportunity to get out in open field and show what he can do with the football. First and ten at the 38. This is the first Michigan State drive of the day. Rather of the night. Rising left, Ingram right. High formation. Dave Urema calls the second. Lorenzo throws a little power there and muscles his way to the 33 before Eric Allen makes the stop. A gain of five, second and five. Bobby Morse led the way with a good block. Bobby's dad, Jim. Led the blocking for another Heisman Trophy winner and our good friend Paul Horning. And his brother, Jim Jr., played for Dan Devine at Notre Dame. Mike Sargent back in. Karima now, four of his last five, five of seven, 34 yards. Rise and left, Ingram right. Second down, five yards to go. Tight end is in motion. Lorenzo has the ball and he is knocked down at the 32. Stacy Harvey, an inside linebacker, made the stop. Stacy Harvey did a fine job on stringing that one out. One of the things that Coach Cooper said that had to be done today is that his team got to make sure tackles. Can't let Lorenzo White break a lot of tackles. And so far, they have done just that. Let's mark it at the 31 yard line from where it will be third and three. See what George Perlis comes up with here. Ingram goes left, Ryzen goes right. Morris and White behind Dave Urema. It's third and three at the 31. Incomplete. Anthony Parker deflected it away. It was intended for Mark Ingram. Ingram's running the pattern, and Anthony Parker just made a tremendous defensive play to tip the ball and knock it out of bounds. All alone in the middle of the field at about the 25-yard line was Lorenzo White, but Yurima didn't see him. And now a field goal try by Chris Cottle. Pete Risco will hold it. Cottle will kick it from the 38. It'll be a 48-yard attempt. It's up. It is good. He drilled it from 48 yards out. So Michigan State gets on the board at 7-3 with 3.54 remaining in the first period of play. The traditional... Nine, nine plays, 35 yards, 2.46, resulting in the field goal.
Drake Mc Montgomery is going to kick off here, which is a bit of a surprise. He's normally the punter, and Fadell kicks off. I don't know if he, I don't think he hurt himself on the field goal. Right? So Montgomery will kick it off, and the deep men, Dan Ford and Kirk Wendorf. Ford wears number seven, Wendorf number 46 for Arizona State. Three. We've got 3.54 left in the first quarter. Braves won today, 4-1. To Been a long time between drinks. Okay, here comes my favorite cliche. Toe meets leather. Wendorf at the 1. At the 10. At the 20. At the 26-yard line. Pretty good return by Kirk Wendorf. Andre Rison made the stop. So that's where Arizona State will get it going with 3.48 remaining in the first half. 25-yard line where they're going to mark it. 7-3. The Sun Devils lead the Spartans. Archie Griffin, Skip Carey with a play-by-play -play story for you. Aaron Cox leaves the game for Arizona State. They go with two tight ends. Stein Cost is in there. Van Rapphorst, the Arizona State quarterback now, three out of six to 31 yards. He's throwing an interception. Darren Tupper is the fullback, and he gets the call and goes for the 28, 29 yard line. Darren Tupper is out of Phoenix, 211 pound senior. Down Buddy made the stop. His dad and brother NFL start. They put it at the 28, and it'll be second and seven from there. If Darren Tupper was in the doghouse with Coach Cooper last year because he didn't come into camp in good shape. This year he came in in great shape, and he's ready to play good football. High formation, Jeff Van Rampart, the quarterback. Second down, about seven. Van Rampart gives to Daryl Harris, and he breaks it across the 35-yard line. That'll be enough for a first down at the 36. Kurt Larson made the stop, but not until a first down was the result. That was the slight draw play. Harris saw a big hole, and he turned on the burners to get through that hole. Did a good job of covering up the football also. First and 10 at the 36-yard line. Harris and Tupper are the running back. Harris is 20 yards and five carries. Garrett in motion. Harris has it again. He's at the 35, and he's blasted at the 37. Moore made the stop. Tim Moore. He's out of St. John's, Michigan. Moore wears number 42. Tim Moore did a good job of shedding blockers, getting to the ball carrier. Coach Perler says he expects some great, great plays out of Tim Moore this year. He's Bruce a very Hill. exciting football player. Bruce Hill checks in and flanks left. It's second and nine at the 36. Van Raphorst has gone all the way at quarterback. And he's rolling left, and he's got running room. He's at the 40 and slides down at the 44-yard line. Shane Bullock got to him, but not until he'd reached the 44. Now well, they're going to mark it at the 43 where he started his slide. And that'll make it about third and three. Tim Moore got a block, and that's how Van Rappos had an opportunity to get around the corner. One of the things that Coach Cooper said is when Van Rappos has the opportunity to run, he must take the run instead of throwing the pass. Chris Garrett and Tony Johnson are flanked on third and three. Van Rappos is going to try to throw for it. And he does, and he finds a man. It's Daryl Harris, and he breaks a tackle, and another, and it's to the 46-yard line in Michigan State territory. Todd Crum made the stop, but a good effort there by Daryl Harris, the junior out of Pomona, California. This is what's got to happen for Arizona State. Daryl Harris has got to come through for the Sun Devils. Right here, he makes players miss. Does a great job of running, keeping his feet, Covering up the football. Daryl Clack played that spot last year. He's now a member of the Dallas Cowboys. 
Van Raphorst has a moving. Oh, there's a big play in the backfield by John Buddy, and he stopped Daryl Harris in his track. Good play by Buddy. He lost the yard or two. Loss of one. It'll be second and 11 at the 48. Loss of two, second and 12. John Buddy had, did a great job of penetrating that offensive line to make the tackle on Daryl Harris. Tony Johnson checks back into the lineup, as does Chris Garrett. For Arizona State, final 25 seconds of the first quarter. Second and 11 from the 48-yard line. Garrett in motion to the right. The give is to Daryl Harris, and he's got a little bit of a hole. He cuts back and gets to the 41-yard line. Penalty flag. We may have a late hit. Well, I think that face mask skip. Two flags now. I think that was an inadvertent face mask. We have a five yard five yard face mask. Archie is right against Michigan State. Let's see if we can spot it. Well, they could have called a late hit, couldn't they? Paul Bobbitt inadvertently got a hold of his face mask, and that was why they made the call. Inadvertently is five yards. On Poitras is 15. <laughs> so the ball is marked to the 36-yard line. That'll be enough for a first down for Arizona State. Ten seconds left in the quarter. There's John Cooper. First and ten at the 36. How you like it up here, Archie? Oh, I like it. You uh, get banged around anyway. That's right. I feel real safe here. Do you miss with you? You miss football at all? Playing it? No, I really don't miss it. Uh, sometimes I watch games and I say that uh, I miss it, but then I think about the day after and I realize that uh, I'm through. First quarter is history. We'll be right back. This is Super Football Saturday Night on Turner Network Television. State on top. And some massive substitutions. But really, Van Rapport has been at the sidelines just talking things over with John Cooper and his staff. First and ten at the 36. Darren Tupper is the single back behind Jeff Van Rapport. First and ten at the Michigan State 36. Tupper breaks it to the 30. Shane Bulla made the stop, but not until a six-yard gain had been made. Kevin Thomas and Todd Callis, good blocks. There's your first quarter statistics. Second down, four yards to go. 14.40 left in the first half. Tony Johnson wide left. Chris Garrett in the slot to the left side. Pepper and Harris are the running backs in the eye. Second down, four yards to go. Again, Tupper gets the call and pulls his way close to a first down. James Szymanski and Mark Nichols in on the stop. We may have a measurement here. No, he's going to be a little bit short. It's going to be third and less than a yard at the 27-yard line. Hello. The two tight end offense, Jeff Gallimore, who cut the touchdown pass, and Stein Koss in the game. Bruce Hill flanked left and coming in motion. And going back in motion the other way. He got the first down at the 25-yard line. There was Daryl Harris, Mark Nichols on the stop, but he got to the 25, and that'll be enough to move the chain. And the Arizona State drive continued. Dale Head did a good job of putting his head down, going for the first down. He knew where the marker was, and he did the best he could to get to that marker. And he did. Aaron Cox checks back in to, back in the team with Chris Garrett at the wideouts. Fidel Underwood is now in at what Arizona State calls quick tackle. First and ten at the... 25, seventh first down for the send up. Harris is hit and 
gets only two. John Buddy made the stop. Mark Nichols helped out. John, They'll mark it at the 23. John Buddy's doing a good job of penetrating the line of scrimmage. There's a look at Shane Bulla. Shane is eyeing him up. And in on the stop. Bruce Hill wide to the left. Aaron Cox wide to the right. Second down and eight at the 23. It's 7-3 Arizona State. We're early in the second quarter. The give is to Daryl Harris, and he's all the way to the 12-yard line. Great deception there. They fooled at least one announcer. Dean Altabelli will make the stop. Give Van Raphorst a lot of credit there. He handled it beautifully. Daryl Harris did a good job of setting this play up. You see how he dipped inside, then took it back outside? He set that play up. And I like the way that Daryl Harris covers up that football. That's important. It sure is. 11, 11 carries for Harris for 43 yards. First and 10 at the 12. The fullback. It's Darren Tupper, and he's inside the 10, down to about the 8-yard line. Arizona State's front line averages six five and a half and 276 pounds. Paul Bobbitt made the stop. They're an experienced line too, Skip, and uh, that certainly is in favor of Arizona State. Two tight ends, Jeff Gallimore, Stein Koss in the game. On second down, the give is again to Darren Tupper. Not much this time. He stands up at about the seven-yard line. Shane Bullard, David Wolf, Mark Nichols all in on the stop. Looks like there's a toga party <laughs> later in the night here in Tempe. You don't want to go there, do you? Think? No, not me. I'm going straight. Third and, <laughs> third and six on the seven. <laughs> this will be the 15th play of the drive. Chris Garrett, flank right. Third down, six yards to go. He's going to throw, and he's got a man. It's a touchdown. Darren Tupper. A seven-yard touchdown pass. Dane Buller was beaten on the play. It's 13-3. Let's look at it again, Arch. This Van Rappel did a good job of play act faking. And he found Darren Tupper right out there in the flat. And then Darren Tupper did what's necessary to get into the end zone. Bullough was a step late. Kent Bostrom will try the extra point, and Chris Garrett will hold. 11.08 remaining in the first half. Snap, place, kick. Good. We'll be right back. It's 14-3. Jim Gallimore and Warren got a good double team block on number 91, Sabansky. And that allowed Tupper to get outside and run all alone in the end zone. Joe Sullivan again will kick off. Mark Ingram and Robert Morris are deep for Michigan State. 14-3 Arizona State. They came into the game a four-point favorite. Sullivan, a 6'3", 185-pounder out of Fremont, California. Ready to kick it. Ingram at the 7. Bobbles it, but comes up. Gets to the 20. 25-30. And that's where Michigan State will start. Linebacker Pat Taylor made the stop at the 30-yard line. All right. First and 10 at the 30. There's your scoring drive. Darren Tupper caught the pass. Second TD pass of the night for Van Rapport. Dave Yarima will try to move the Spartan. Let's call it the 31 yard line. Two tight ends, Mike Sargent and Richard Gusevich, both in the game for Michigan State. Archie Griffin, Skip Carey with you. Sure, I hope you've enjoyed Super Football Saturday on TBS. Lorenzo White.
behind. Doesn't get much. Maybe two to the 33. Sean Patterson out of right here in Tempe, Arizona, Jr. made the stop. Jim Reynosa helped out. Here's a nice on Lorenzo White. He takes the pitch. It's a short pitch. And he tries to get through the line of scrimmage. But as you can see, the Arizona State defense are gang tackled. Lorenzo, five carries, 15 yards. Andre Reason is flanked wide. Dave Yaruma is going to throw. He has plenty of time. He's got a man. It's Reason at the 50, and he's knocked out. They're going to mark it at the 49 yard line. A good throw by Yarima and a first down for Michigan State. Anthony Parker, the right corner, made the stop. Andre Reason here does a good job of getting down the field, avoiding the linebacker getting inside the zone and hooking up and catching the football. It was a great job of covering up. He knew he was going to get hit, so he covered up the football. Richard Gusevich in a tight end again. Reason flanks to the right. Ingram is a wing back left. Lorenzo White tries the weak side and doesn't get much. Gets to the 48. Anthony Parker ran him out of bounds. A gain of three. It's second and seven at the 48-yard line in Arizona State territory with 9.52 left in the half. Lorenzo didn't get much on that play, but you can tell the type of running back he is by the move he made to get around that corner. Second down, about seven. 14-3, Arizona State is our score. Capacity crowd, standing room only crowd of more than 70,000. Andre Reason goes right, and again, the wing back left is Mark Ingram. Ingram goes in motion right. The give is to Lorenzo, and again, they got him. Bernard Jones in on the stop. Nothing at all for Lorenzo. Lorenzo tries to cut this play back, and it looked like he had some room. But Bernard Jones is right there to make the stop with the help from Anthony Parker. No game. To the 48. And you look at it from another angle. It's third down, Michigan State one on three on third down possibility. Ingram to the right, rising to the left. Third and seven. Yarima to throw. He's got all the time in the world, and he's got. Gusevich is tight end, and he pulls his way close to the 30-yard line. Robbie Boyd ran him out, but there's a big third down conversion. They say he got inside the 30 to the 29, a 19-yard pickup. Gusevich is how he pronounces it, another first down. Yurima drops back. He doesn't have any pressure from anywhere. And Gusevich is there to make the catch and uh, does a good job of getting the ball up the field to make additional yardage. And he dropped that shoulder. Funny thing. about three more yards, didn't it? Both coaches told us it was going. They thought it would be a low-scoring game, and it doesn't look like it's going to be. First and ten at the 29. Nine minutes left in the first half. Ingram in motion. They come weak side. Lorenzo inside the 25. Bobby Morse upset with himself. He didn't get as good a block as he hoped. Rick Zumwalt and Greg Clark to stop. They mark it at the 25-yard line. A pickup of four. Clock ticks away with 8.40 remaining. Yarima brings him out. Rise into the right, and again, Ingram in that wing back. Slot on the left, starting in motion. Yarima rolls right. He's got a man wide open. It's Bobby Morris' fullback inside the 15 to about the 14-yard line. Eric Allen made the stop, but the fullback, Bobby Morse, rolls to another first down. That's their rollout right. And what they're doing is uh, they're sending Mark Ingram down deep, and he's got the option to break either two ways, uh, to run a post or a post corner, and then they send Bobby Morse up underneath, and uh, Ingram was covered, so Bobby Morse got the play. Rising flank wide to the left. First and ten at the 14. Lorenzo Wise is in trouble, but he reverses his field. 
Watch out now. He's at the 10. He's at the 5. He's at the 2. What a run. Eric Allen got it. But he made it happen by himself. He reminded me of you, Archie Griffin, on that play. That was a great individual effort by Lorenzo White. He got a great block from his quarterback, too. He takes the pitch out. That's their normal pitch to the left. He sees a lot of defenders sitting there waiting for him. He reverses his field, and he goes the other way. And he almost took it in the end zone. Had Urema been able to get the block a little better, he would have. As it is, it's first and goal at the two. Mike Sargent and Richard Gusevich both in there. Both got in. Lorenzo dives. Did he get there? No. He's pushed back at the one. Scott Stephen, who John Cooper tells us is a true star, a truly outstanding college football player playing with a tender shoulder made the stop. That's Lorenzo trying to go over top. He did that a few times last year in Arizona State. Probably expected that he would try it again. Second and goal from the one. Yarima brings him out. Sergeant in motion. The give is to Lorenzo. Touchdown. He got in. He broke the plane with a helmet. And a touchdown is the result. A one-yard lunge. Greg Clark and Anthony Parker threw him back, but not before he had broken the plane of the goal line. Let's look. What happened here? Lorenzo White got the football, turned up field, and he stuck the ball out, got the ball over the plane of the goal, and that is a touchdown. How in the world did he hang on to the football? But he did. Well, as soon as it breaks the plane of the goal, it's a touchdown anyway, and he did that. He got it over the goal line for the score. Pete Risco will hold. Chris Cardell will kick. Pat Schremer will snap it. It's good, and it's now 14-10. We got a good one going. We'll be right back. This is Super Football Saturday Night. It's on Turner Network Television. This is the mark of a good runner. Lorenzo White on this play did not have much room to run, but he put his head down, jumped over, and stuck the ball out over the goal line to get the score. Greg Montgomery will kick it off. The deep men are Kirk Wendorf and Dan Ford. 14-10, Arizona State has the lead. The kick is a good one. It's coming to Dan Ford in the end zone. He boots it, he's coming out anyway. He's in a mess, but he's down to the 13. A cornerback, reserve cornerback Harlan Barnett made the stop. There's your time remaining, and there's the story. First and 10 at the 13 for Arizona State. Archie Griffin, Skip Carey with you. Jeff Van Rapport leads him out. There's the Michigan State scoring grant. Lorenzo White got the touchdown. Bruce Hill is in and flanked to the left. Aaron Cox wide right. Darren Tupper and Daryl Harris are the running back. Long count by Van Rapport. He keeps it and he throws into the flank and he threw it away. It was intended for Bruce Hill. Tim Moore was there on the coverage. John Buddy put on the pass rep. So it's second and 10 at the 13 for Arizona State. We have six minutes, 33 seconds remaining in the first half. Van Rampors wouldn't mind having the same kind of career that Danny has had. Chris Garrett goes wide left, Aaron Cox to the right. Now Garrett in motion to the right side, and he lines up in the slot. Starts back in motion the other way. Daryl Harris gets the ball and gets to the 15 and gets to the 19 and maybe the 20. Daryl Harris, Mark Nichols made the stop. He's at the 20-yard line, and it will be third and three from there. I'm impressed with Daryl Harris. He's doing what Coach Cooper expects of him. Come in and carry the load. Yeah, Cooper. Show that he could do the job. He's got 50 yards in 12 carries. Cooper told us if this tailback position didn't get it done, he was in for a long year, but he was confident this kid could. 
Bruce Hill, Bruce Hill checks back in. He splits left there and Cox to the right. Tupper and Harris in the eye behind Jeff Van Rampoort. Third and three, possession play. Harris? I don't think so. Let's go back to Kevin Slayton in Atlanta. He'll bring you up to date on some other scores. All right, Skip, thank you very much. Let's check some of the action that's going on right now around the country. At Arizona, Colorado State is proving to be a stubborn foe. They beat Colorado last week. They trailed by seven in the third quarter. Stanford putting it to Texas. Five minutes left. Minnesota handles Bowling Green easily. Let's go to Tempe. Okay, Kevin, thank you. Robert Morse, the deep man. Mike Shue is the punter, and he gets a pretty good one out of there. Morse fields it at the 39, and he's in trouble. Gets to the 45 before Robbie Boyd made the spot. Made the stop, rather. We'll be right back. Play about to resume here. Michigan State will have the ball first and 10 at their own 45-yard line. They trail 14-10 with five minutes, six seconds remaining in an action-packed first half. Ah, oh, the pomp and pageantry and stuff of college football. Andre Ryzen to the right. Ingram in motion that way. And they go for all of it. Just missed Andre Ryzen. Ryzen, rather. Eric Allen with the coverage, but he was out there. The pass just a step too tall. Second and 10 from the 45. There's a penalty on the play, Skip. There is a penalty flag. We'll see what that's about. Holding on the off. Once again, holding against Michigan State. They've been guilty of all the penalties tonight. You see John Cooper wants him to take it and make it first and 20 at the 35. Boy, that was a wild game Notre Dame had today, huh? It certainly With was. Michigan. They did everything but win it. <laughs> Ten yard penalty, Mark Holding. First and 20 at the 35 yard line. Exactly five minutes remaining in the half. George Perlos, not happy with that. Boy, he's an interesting man. We really enjoyed our talk with him today. Four penalties for 40 yards against Michigan State. Arizona State has none. Sante Sopolo. Sopolo. Out of Long Beach, California. Sante Sopolo was on Lorenzo White just about the time he received the handoff. Sort of a delayed draw. A loss of four back to the 31. Lorenzo didn't have a chance on that one. He didn't even get a chance to get started. Mike Sargent leaves the game at tight end. Richard Gesevich back in. Ryzen is wide right. Ingram split left. Uh, all alone. Gusevich the tight end again, and he gets all the way up to the 48-yard line. Enough for a first down. Greg Clark to stop a 17-yard advance. Check it, 16-yard advance. They're going to mark it back at the 47. That is complete number 86. Richard I misspoke. I said first down. It is not. It's third and eight at the 47. Kusevich is doing a good job receiving that football. He's catching the ball very, very well. So a possession play for Michigan State. Clock ticks with 3.35 left. Yarima to throw. A wide open again. Inside the 40 to the 30. It came back with the same play. Richard Gusevich again. The sophomore from Gretzville, New York. Greg Clark the stop. Now it's a first down. Had the play action pass, and he's rolling to his right. He drops back and stops and hits Gusevich. And Gusevich does a great job of turning the ball up the field and getting those extra yards. Gusevich gets a rest. Mike Sargent checks back in. There's the time remaining in the first half. Ryzen flanks right. Ingram on the wing left. 
Morrison White in the backfield. Lorenzo gets the call. They spring him out, but he gets inside the 35 to the 34. Rick Zumwalt, whose number has been called a lot here, makes the stop. A sophomore out of Huntington Beach, California. He's what they call their devil back. They're going to mark it near the 34, a gain of four. Second and six. Arizona State strung that out, but uh, Lorenzo did a good job of gaining yards with each step. He picked up four yards on that. He's rushed 14 times for 36 yards. He once carried the ball 53 times in a game. That's amazing. And got up and went to practice the next day, just chipper as can be. That, too, is amazing. Two and a half minutes left. Lorenzo, he's got some room this time. 25, 20, penalty flag is down as he gets to the 15. Anthony Parker made the stop. stop. We may have a clip. The flag was dropped at the 27-yard line. And I think Michigan State is going to be penalized again. Offense. Hold. Holding again. They finally break one, and they get tagged with a holding penalty. Instead of a first down at the 17-yard line, Michigan State will be set way back. There's part of the Sun Devil contingent. It was 88 degrees, by the way, at game time. Michigan State has... Oh. On the offense. From the end of the spot of the foul. Second. It's still second down. Michigan State has some big fans set up on their sideline. But it's cooled off nicely here. It's at the 36, and it's second and eight. Yarima, bingo. It's rising, and he's at the 15-yard line. And Dave Yarima beginning to pick Arizona State apart. Anthony Parker got there late. He made the stop. Yarima does a great job here of getting the football because he was really pressured. Andre Risen made a short catch. And I like the way both of these teams are turning that ball up the field. Tell you play. what, they came to watch Lorenzo White, but what they're seeing is a great passing display. Risen's second catch, he has 37 yards. First and 10 at the 16. A minute 55 left in the half. Neither the team has used the timeout. Lorenzo White. Gets a few. Rick Zumwald again on the stop. They mark it at the 11 and pick up a five. Jim Reynoso also helped on the play. Second and five at the 11. The Spartans driving for, if they can get it, a touchdown that would give them their first lead of the night. He's got some numbers, doesn't he? Let's call it second and three. They mark it inside the 10 at the nine yard line. Yarima calls signals. Lorenzo again, and he bashes into about the seven. Stacy Harvey made the stop at inside linebacker, 6'4, 230 out of Pasadena, California. He's short of the first down. It's going to be third and a long one. Time becoming a factor, 90 seconds remaining. Stacey Harvey did a good job of making that stop on the rim to the right. Yarima checks for the sideline. Third and one at the seventh. Ingram wide right. Rising to the left. They give it to him again, and I think he got the first down. Skip McClendon on the stop, but he's close to the five. It depends on where they spot that ball. I think he got that first skip. I don't think he got much of a spot, and he did not get the first down, I don't believe. Timeout is called here by Michigan State. The ball is at the seven-yard line. We'll be back. This is Super Football Saturday Night on Turner Network Television. Okay, it's fourth and one. What do you think is going to happen, Archie? Oh, I think they're going to send Lorenzo over the top. It's a short one. And I think Lorenzo can go over top and get that first down. Both tight ends are in. Gusevich and Sargent. It's fourth and one at the seventh. 
51 seconds left. Yarima, he's going to keep it himself, and he's going to throw, and he's got a touchdown. I think it was Bobby Mortz, it was, who made the reception. Yarima got pounded to the turf again, but not before he got the job done. And fourth and one, they went for it all and succeeded. Morse with a touchdown pass from seven yards out. Michigan State has the lead. Let's look again. Arizona State defense was looking for Lorenzo White to go over top, just like I thought he would. And Bobby Morris went out to the flat, caught the ball, and dove into the end zone. Larry McLaughlin got to Yurima, but a split second late. He buried him in the turf here, but he had just gotten the ball away. Yurima's Rip. taking a pounding, but he's still getting the ball off and doing a great job in completing passes. Chris Cottle completes it, the extra point out of the hold of Pete Risco. And Michigan State has taken the lead for the first time in the game with 45 seconds left in the half. Michigan State 17, Arizona State 14. This is Super Football Saturday night on Turner Network Television. Hanged up and still gets the ball off. That is impressive. Yarima is 12 of 16 for 140 yards and a touchdown, 7 of 8, 106 yards in the second quarter. Greg Montgomery kicks it off. Kirk Windorf has it near the 10, now at the 20, and now to the 24. Ball pops loose. Big pile up. Who's going to get it? It's still free. We'll wait till they unpile this mess. Wendorf coughed it up, and a lot of hands touched it. They're still probably tussling for it. Percy Snow made the hit. Here it is again. How many guys take a shot at this? One, two, three, four, five. It's still loose. Six. Arizona State recovered it, and they have the ball with 33 seconds left in the half. Let's see how they play it here. They trail for the first time. Garrett is split wide to the left. Channing Williams in there with Daryl Harris, the running back. Jeff Van Rampart gives to the fullback. It's Channing Williams. He, he's knocked out of bounds at the 32-yard line. John Miller made the stop, the left cornerback out of Farmington Hills, Michigan. There's what's coming up at halftime, the Sun Devil Band. Kevin Slayton will have the scores and highlights, and we'll be back with you. This has been a good one. 27 seconds left. Bruce Hill and Aaron Cox are the whiteouts. See if Van Rampor's airs it out here in the closing second. He gives instead to Daryl Harris. He gets just to the 35 and is pushed back. James Szymanski got there first. The crowd. They love wide open football here. They wanted him to crank it up. 20 seconds remaining. Yeah, they want to see him throw the ball. They don't like running that ball on the ground with 20 seconds left in the ball game. Stein Koss. The half. <laughs> Stein Koss checks in. Jeff Gallimore out. Clock ticks with 15 seconds remaining. This could be the last play. Bruce Hill is wide left. Aaron Cox wide right. They did get the first down. It's first and ten at the 35. And Rapport is going to go long now. And he went down, I believe, when he caught the ball. Aaron Cox caught it, but he was out of bounds. And that's it. The first half is history. 17-10 Michigan State at halftime. We'll be right back. Quarter through seven completions for eight attempts for 106 yards and one touchdown. Van Raphorst had one completion and three attempts for seven yards. Dave Urema is really making a difference in this football game. Yeah, he's been the star to this point. Greg Montgomery will kick it off for Michigan State. Dan Ford, Kirk Wendor for deep. It's 17-14 Spartans. We've had a dandy. We're underway, and the kick is going to be a little short. It's booted by Ford. He picks it up at the 10. Gets to the 20 and is nailed at the 24-yard line. Strong safety Paul Babadu has been in on several plays. Made the stop. So Arizona State goes to work first and 10 at their own 24-yard line. There are your first half possessions. Oh. 
I haven't done a football game in about 12 years, and I'm enjoying working with you, Archie Griffin. But the guy who's saving me is my pal Tom Smith, our director. He's a, he's great. Frank Belmont, our producer. Harrison Williams are the running backs. Bruce Hill goes in motion. Harris gets the call and fights his way to about the 28 yard line to pick up a four. Ah, youth. Second and six at the 28. Tim Moore made the stop. The outside linebacker for Michigan State. That big line pushed Michigan State's defense back and it gave Harris some room to run. The average six five and a half in height and 276 pounds does the offensive line of the Sun Devils. Van Rathorst to throw. Sideline pattern. He's got a man. It's Aaron Cox, and he's out of bounds at the 46. John Miller ran him out, but not before he had picked up a first down at the 41 yard line, not the 46. Aaron Bruce. Cox did a good job of running that outfit. 11 yard gain. Bruce Hill checks back in. Cox now flanks wide to the left. Hill comes in motion. Penalty flag is down. Cox is there at the 21 yard line, but we have a flag. Cox made the reception, but it might be called back. It's 38 yards if it stands. Holding. But it won't. Holding on the Sun Devils, their first penalty of the night. That was one of the biggest plays that Arizona State has made, and uh, it's called back on a penalty. John Van Rapport got hit just as he threw the ball, and Aaron Cox made a sensational catch. Boy, he sure did. John Buddy was the one that put the pressure on Van Rapport. He had to slow up. That made a super... Did you see catch. how he went up for that ball, turned around at the same time in the air, and Holding still made the catch? On the offense. So the instead of a 38-yard gain, it's first and 20 at the 31-yard line. You know, Cox is one of the uh, premier receivers in the Pac-10. Chris Garrett wide left, Tony Johnson wide right. First and 20. Channing Williams, Daryl Harris, the running back. It's first and 20. He's going to the air. He eludes one man, throws for the sideline, and it's complete. Tony Johnson made the reception up close to the 50-yard line. John Miller made the stomp on it. It's not a first down, but he got a bunch of the yardage back. Ben Rapworth made this play happen. He had a good fake here. Then he dodged, got around, and threw the ball. And a great catch by Tony Johnson. All hands. 16-yard gain. It's second and four, and that's a big one for Arizona State. Bruce Hill comes left. Aaron Cox back in there, and he's split right. Jeff Van Rapphorst is the quarterback, and he gives to Daryl Harris. And Harris picks up some yardage to midfield. David Wolf out of Southgate, Michigan, a 240-pound senior tackle, made the stop. Tim Moore gave him some help. 12.55 left in the third quarter there, short of the first down. It'll be third and one. Harris now is rushed for 60 yards in 16 carries. Third and one at the 50. Harris both, is doing a fine job, Skip. Both tight ends, Jeff Gallimore, Stein, Koss are in the game. Garrett in motion. The give to Harris, and he surges forward for the first time. Daryl Harris picked it up. Kurt Larson, Shane Fuller on the tackle. But not before the first down. Harris does a fine job here. He hit and he stopped. And he still squirts for two extra yards. First and ten from the 47 yard line. That's knowing where the marker is. Arizona State has kept the ball since the second half began. Bruce Hill in motion. The give is to the fullback, Channing Williams, and he booms forward close to the 40-yard line. A gain of about six. 
Well, there are two little devils there, and I like one a lot better than the other. <laughs> I bet you would, Kip. Second down, four yards to go. Arizona State trying to turn the yardage out there, letting their running backs run behind that big, huge line that they have. And it's been effective. I think they'll go more to that this quarter. Second and four, the give to the fullback, Channing Williams again. He powers across the 40, down to the 39-yard line. He'll be about two yards short of a first down. Jim Szymanski, freshman out of Sterling Heights, Michigan, made the stop. They're close to a first down. Yeah, about a yard short, I think. Pick up a three. Third and one at the 38. Both tight ends in there again, Gallimore and Cox. Garrett in motion. He's going to throw for it. It was for Gallimore, and he made the reception at the 35-yard line. Surprising play, but it worked. And a first down is the result at the 35. 10.54 left third quarter. Ben Rapport is doing a fine job of faking that play action and pulling it out. And Gallimore made a fine catch. It was low, but he was able to go down and get the football. Aaron Cox splits right. Bruce Hill to the left. From the 35. Harris breaks one tackle, but he's thrown for a loss. John Buddy is the guy that lost the play up. He forced him wide, and then Tim Moore made the hit and knocked him down for a loss of two. Well, maybe a loss of one back to the 36, second and 11. That's one of those plays where the running back say there's no air nowhere. <laughs> Chris Garrett wide right. Aaron Cox to the left. Archie Griffin, skip Terry, will you? From Sun Devil Stadium. He's going to throw, and he's got his tight end, Stein Koss, and he gets to the 29-yard line. Paul Bobbitt rode him out of bounds. Coach Cooper had confidence in both of his tight ends, and Stein Koss can do a fine job by catching the football here. But Coach Cooper had confidence in both of his tight ends. Hill and Cox are the wideouts. Hill flank wide left. It's third and four at the 29. Shining Williams. Good thing. The look in. Oh, good hit. The pass was intended for Bruce Hill. It was Todd Crum who popped Hill and knocked the ball loose. So it's fourth and four on the 29. Let's look at that hit again. Todd Crum does a good job here of shaking the ball loose from Bruce Hill. Although the ball was a little bit behind Bruce Hill, he had an opportunity to catch the football. Chris Garrett will hold. Kent Brownstrom will kick, and he'll try a 46-yard field goal, and he'll try to tie the game. It's up. It's far enough. It's good. So we're all tied. At 17, a 46-yard field goal for Bostrom. There's your score. We'll be right back. Joe Sullivan will kick it off. Mark Ingram and Robert Morse are the deep men. Archie Griffin, Skip Carey with you from Tempe, Arizona. We've got a tie ball game with 9.45 left in the third quarter. And it's a good one. Sullivan. It's going to be Mark Ingram. He's at the 20. He's at the 30. And he's hit at the 33 and pushed back. Mark Tingstad, the linebacker, made the stop at the 33-yard line. So Michigan State has pretty good field position. A penalty flag was dropped, we think. Oh, no, I think not. No, no flag. Michigan State will go to work. Arizona State went 12 plays for 44 yards on that drive to score. Lorenzo White and Bobby Morris are the deep backs. Dave Yarima 
had the completion for very little yardage. Mike Sargent made a nice play at the 34-yard line. Robbie Boyd knocked him out of bounds. A gain of only about a yard. Second and nine at the 34. Yarima has been the star of this game. I would think that play is designed to go a little further downfield. What do you say, Skip? I would think so. Richard Gusevich back in the game. Mike Sargent goes up. Andre Risen flanks right. Mark Ingram is the wing back to the left. We're tied at 17. The pitch to Mr. Wink. Nothing there. He gets to the 35, and that's all. Frank Rudolph, the defensive end from Scottsdale, Arizona, made the stop. It'll be third and eight at the 35. And Michigan State started the game slowly and now start the second half the same way. Mark's, Mike Sargent checks back in. Gasevich goes out. There was no push by the offensive line on that play. And Lorenzo had nowhere to go. Nickelback checks in for Arizona State. Jeff Joseph. Possession play. Third and eight. Yarima has pressure. He runs out of the pocket. He's not going to get it. He's down at the 40. Robbie Boyd made the stop. He got five, but that's not enough. It'll be fourth and three from the 40. Arizona State's in their nickel defense now. They're designed specifically to stop the pass. Yarima didn't find anyone to throw the ball to, so he decided to take off and run with it. He came up short. Anthony Parker will be the deep man. Greg Montgomery is the Michigan State punter, and he'll kick it from around his 30-yard line. He's averaged 37 yards on two previous kicks. He gets this one to turn over. Fair catch called for and made at the 25-yard line by Parker. So that's where Arizona State will set up shop. First and 10 at the 25. A 35-yard punt. First and 10 at the 25-yard line. Oh, wait a minute. This has been called back. Here's our referee. Personal fouls. Offense. Defense. Four. Off offsetting fouls. So they'll kick it again. 8-10 left third quarter. Confusion reigns supreme. Foul on both sides. I wonder why they would reach one the... under. Were I the were I the rule maker, I would just let the play stand and go from there, but I'm not. So Parker is deep again, and Greg Montgomery will punt again. Well, Greg Montgomery's uh fine punter. He was all Big Ten. Parker is deep. Here we go. Snap from the 40. The snap is good. Not much of a kick. But it takes a great bounce. Look at how this is going to work out. They're going to cover it at the three-yard line. A big break, a 57-yard kick. He really didn't kick it that well, but what a bounce he got. And Michigan, or rather Arizona State, starts deep in their own territory at the three. We'll be back. This is Super Football Saturday night on Turner Network Television. Is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the Pacific 10 Conference. Any publication, rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, or accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Pacific 10 Conference or the Turner Broadcasting System is prohibited. Van Rapphorst, 9 for 15 with an interception. The give is to Daryl Harris, and he bangs his way up to about the seven yard line, a pickup of four. That big offensive line may be making its bulk felt here. I think we're going to see more running by Arizona State. They've got to take advantage of that strength on their offensive line. Jeff Van Raphorst brings him up. From the seven, a second down. Bruce Hill in motion. 
The give is to the second man, and Darrell Harris really did a good job to get back to the line of scrimmage. James Szymanski with a stop. So it's third and six at the seven. Man down on the field. An Arizona State man is shaken up. And a timeout is called with 7.05 remaining. Jim Warney, the strong tackle, a 6'7", 300-pounder out of Tempe, is the man who's down. And the training staff attends to him. We'll be right back. Tonight's game is being brought to you by Buick and your Buick dealers. For comfort, innovation, and a real commitment to quality, it's today's Buicks. Well, Jim Warren is going to need assistance getting off the field here, and you always hate to see that. It appears to be a left leg injury. Looks like a knee skip. Yeah, that's, that's tough. Scott Kirby will probably come in to replace him. A 276-pound sophomore from Pinellas Park, Florida. But Warren is now... Let's see if we can find out what happened to him here. He's number 76. Here it is, right there. Oh, and there is his own man got knee to knee. First of all, Clark fell on his knee, and then he got hit by his own man. So Jim Warren is gone for a while. Meanwhile, it's third down and six yards to go at the seven-yard line. Seven minutes of action remaining in the third quarter. Possession play for the Sun Devils. Chris Garrett is flanked. Will they throw this deep in their territory? The answer to that is yes. Dan Rapforce. Sideline pattern. Got a man. Aaron Cox first down at the 26. What a throw by Van Rapport. Beautifully done. Van Rappos here takes a short drop and hits Aaron Cox right on the sideline. That's a good job of getting the feet down inside the line. Paul Bobbitt made the stop, but not until he'd reached the 26. That was good concentration by Aaron Cox. Channing Williams, the single setback. Jeff Van Rappos gives it to Williams, and he is nailed. For a loss of one by James Szymanski. He's a freshman and he's playing bigger as the game progresses. Tim Moore helped him out. It'll be second and 11 at the 25. And there's your time. We're in the third quarter and there's the score as well. Archie Griffin, Skip Carey with you from Sun Devil Stadium. Standing room only crowd of more than 70,000 on hand. Daryl Harris. Checks back in. Tony Johnson flanks to the left. Bruce Hill to the right. The give is again to Daryl Harris, and he is nailed and knocked out of bounds at around the 26. John Miller made the stop. The left cornerback. Stops the clock with 6.01 left in the third quarter. They'll mark it closer to the 27-yard line. It'll be third and nine. 70,689. This is a good job by Tim Moore stringing that play out. Arizona State tried to run a counter play. Third and nine. Passing situation from the shotgun. Van Rapport has some time. There's a man at the 35. Jeff Gallimore again. He's at the 35. About a yard short, though, of the first down. Van Rapport from the shotgun formation had a lot of time to throw this ball. He sat in there and found his man, Jeff Gallimore, to make the reception. Fine catch by Jeff Gallimore. Mike Shue, a sophomore out of Mesa, will punt it. Robert Morris is the deep man for Michigan State standing at his 20. Shue has one kick for 40 yards. 
Morris will field this at the 22. His dad's there watching him play. He cuts up the middle 30, 35. Good return to the 36-yard line. Stacy Harvey made the stop for Arizona State. So they'll set up shot the Spartans well at the 36-yard line. This is Super Football Saturday night on Turner Network Television. Score, we have 5.15 left in the third quarter. George Perlis prowls the sidelines for Michigan State. He's undefeated in openers and can't recall the last time he was involved in a loss. He says in the early 70s with the Steelers, Ingram and Ryzen are the wide receivers. Dave Urena, the cornerback. Lorenzo White. Gets the call and gets some yardage. He got to the 43 and almost more than that. It'll be second and three from the 43. Stacy Harvey tripped him up. If Harvey doesn't get a hand on his ankle, he might have done some serious damage. This is the tall sweep. Lorenzo finds the seam and starts to sprint. Got tripped up. Those are the kind of running back tape. And you know you could have got more out of it. Lorenzo has gained 61 yards on 20 carries. It's been tough to come by for him today. The give this time is to the fullback, Bobby Morris, and he bangs out over the 45 to the 47. Jim Reynosa made the stop. The ball was popped loose on that play, but I think he was already down before it came out of there. Larry McLaughlin is also in on the stop. And they're going to have to measure, it would appear, close to a first down. Yep, they'll bring the chains in. Michigan State has had the ball precious little in the second half. They ran three plays, punted. Arizona State has had it about 23 snaps, and Michigan State about five. And did he get the first down? He did not. Less than a foot. Jim Warren, by the way, will not return to the game tonight. He's been taken to the hospital for x-rays of that knee. Both tight ends. Richard Gusevich and Mike Skim here. Pretty earrings. I don't know. The arena surged ahead. Larry McLaughlin was there to meet him, and I don't know if he got it or not. They may have to measure again. Either to the left. It's going to be close. Will they measure again? Yep, they're going to have to bring him in again. The referee, Tom Quinn, wants to take another look. McLaughlin, a 260-pound senior out of Los Angeles, made the stop. You got it. Just barely, but he got it. First and ten at the 46 for the Spartans. 350 remains. Michigan State now with 10 first downs. Arizona State with 14. We're tied at 17. Ingram wide left. Ryzen the other way. Arena to throw. He's got a man on the sidelines. Ryzen, but it's broken up at the last minute. He threw it a little late that time. Eric Allen made the stop, but Ryzen was open. Urema got it there a little late. Ryzen runs a good outcut here, but Eric Allen does a fantastic job of coming in and breaking up that play, just getting his hands in there right on time. Here's He's, another look at that. You see, he was open for a got while. Got that hand right in there. Good play by the cornerback. Second down, 10 yards to go. Ryzen is right, Ingram left. And a whistle halts play with 3.38 left in the third quarter. And Arizona State calls timeout. Odd time to use. I don't know if they were mixed up on the coverage or failed to have the right number of men in the field. At any rate, they call timeout their first of the second half. We'll be right back. Okay, 3.38 remaining, third quarter. Archie Griffin, Skip Carey with you. 
Ingram and Ryzen again split. Second down, 10 yards to go for Michigan State from their own 46. A lot of pressure, but he dumps it over the middle to Bobby Morris, who's fullback. He crosses midfield and gets it to the 46 yard line, a pickup of about eight. Stacy Harvey made the snap. That big rush was put on by Sauté Sapulo. Dave Urema, under pressure, has been very, very impressive. He looks like he's getting ready to get hit, and he still gets the ball off to make a completion. Good news on G Jim Warren. It's just sprained knee ligaments. There's no break, and that's, that's good to hear. Third down, two yards to go. Three minutes left in the quarter. Urema on third and two. Lorenzo White. Lunged across the 45, but I don't think he got there. Robbie Boyd made the stop. They may have yet another measurement here. Nice. Yep, they're going to measure again. We've had three measurements in the last five plays here. Lorenzo takes that tall sweep. Does not have much room to run. There's no push on the line to give him a lane to run through. But he does what he can do to try and reach the first down. It's not enough. He's a foot and a half short. Will Michigan State kick it away from near midfield? Apparently not. Well, let's wait and see. Your going to stay in there. They're going to go for it. Sergeant. And Gusevich, both tight ends in there at all. This might be one of the big plays of this game. Fourth and a half yard. From the 44. The fullback, Moores, I don't know. He may have gotten it. It's going to be close. They'll take a look now. It looks like he made it, but if so, not by much. Frank Rudolph made the stop. And here come the chains again. We this shall see. thinks they've got it. And they're right. First down, Michigan State, so their gamble paid off. That could be a key place for this drive. Joe Pugh has checked into the game for the first time tonight to play fullback for Michigan State, a freshman out of Grand Rapids. First and ten from the 43-yard line. Lorenzo White. Scott Stephen made the stop. He lost a yard, if anything. Scott Stevens has been out most of the summer with a shoulder injury, and he's getting a chance to play a little bit tonight. You know, it said he's one of the best athletes out here on the West Coast. Willie Boyer checks into the game to play the flanker. Andrew Risen is left, Willie Boyer right. And Yarima goes to his tight end, Mike Sargent, who reaches the 34-yard line. Very close again to a first down. Eric Allen with a stop. He's had a big night. A 10-yard advance, and I think a yard short of the first down. Mike Sargent takes a great release here, hooks up in the zone, and waits for the ball. Third and one at the 35-yard line. 70,689 paid here. Second largest crowd they've ever had in Sun Double Stadium. Third and one, not much there. Stacy Harvey hit Bobby Morris. I don't think he got it. Well, they went for it fourth and one, ten yards back. Rudolph and Steven in on the hit. That Arizona defense really stacked that one up. So it's fourth and one. Yurima looks to the sideline. He's at the 
the sidelines now. He's going to wait till the quarter's over. And the third quarter is history from Tempe, Arizona. We're tied at 17, and we'll be right back. Buick announces fourth and one at the 34. Possession play for Michigan State. They have three tight ends in the game. Now Mike Anderson joins Richard Gasinich and Mike Sargent. They're at the 34. Arizona State has been tough in this spot. Dave Urema, Bart Sidno. They go with their ace. He got it. But a flag is thrown, and it might be holding. Lorenzo White got the first down. Eric Allen made the stop, but again, a penalty flag has hit the deck. Bobby Morse threw the block that freed Lorenzo. It's against Michigan State, and it's probably holding. And that will make it fourth and 11, and will change this thing drastically. That's what it is. Holding on the offense. Fourth down, 11 yards to go at the 44-yard line. That makes an altogether different situation. It brings Greg Montgomery into the game to kick. Anthony Parker will be deep. And he'll be aiming. Montgomery will for the corner, I would guess. Well, he's got a pretty good kick now. He'll kick it from around his own 45. Anthony Parker, the deep man, stands at the 10. Montgomery, three kicks tonight, averaging 44 yards. Holding on the offense. Fourth down. Tom Quinn, our referee. Fourth and 11. Ball at the 44. They start the clock. Pat Schirmer is the snapper. He gets a good run away. And that kick may make the end zone. Nope, great bounce, and it's down at the seven-yard line. Doug Rogers downed it at the seven, so Arizona State's in bad shape again as far as field position is concerned. Last time they started at their three, this time at their seven, a 37-yard punt. First and ten for Arizona State at their seven-yard line. So Jeff Van Rapphorst brings his troops back out on the field. Daryl Harris has really outrun Lorenzo White in this game this evening. We're all tied at 17. Daryl Harris is showing the Arizona State fans that uh, he can feel Daryl clap shoot. He's going to find Josh now. Daryl Harris, Channing Williams are the running backs. Two tight ends, Gallimore and Koss in there for the send up Hill in motion. The give is to the fullback, Channing Williams. He breaks a tackle and reaches the 12, 13 yard line. Todd Crum made the stop. A pickup of about six. Second and four at the 13. Channing Williams did a fine job of getting that ball to the outside. He had fine balance on that particular play also. Kept his feet and kept churning, get extra yardage. Van Rapphorst leads them out. Second down, four yards to go at the 13. This time it's the second man through, Daryl Harris, and he is knocked down at about the 15 yard line. Todd Crum made the stop. He's shy of the first down. It'll be third down, and we'll see where they mark it. Third and a long one, I think, just outside the 15. Well, third and one at the 16 yard line. So a possession play, 14.03 left in our game. Both fullbacks, this is what they call their hog formation. Channing Williams and Darren Tupper are in the game. And it's Williams, and he got the first down across near the 18-yard line. The Redskins have their hog offensive line, and Arizona State's got their hog backfield. Wolf and Larson made the stop. Earlier we talked to John Cooper about the fourth quarter and a close game. Here's what he said. I, I feel if it is a close ball game in the fourth quarter that our team will have an advantage simply because 
not only with the weather being in our favor, but uh, I think the, the fact that we've got a sellout crowd here, 70,000 screaming Sun Devil fans, you know, really work to your advantage. So I, I, I feel like definitely a close ball game in the fourth quarter will be to, to uh, the Sun Devil's advantage. Uh, an incomplete pass intended for Aaron Cox while John was talking on tape. And a second and 10 in the 18 yard line. Well, Coach Cooper, it is a close game. Tony Johnson has checked in as the wide out, along with Chris Garrett. Second and 10 at the 18, Van Rapport. Calls the signal. And the draw play to Channing Williams is fullback, but not much there. He got to the 21. Mark Nichols has had a big night, made the stop. Helped out by Tim Moore, who's also played well. It'll be third and seven at the 21 yard line. Mark Nichols is only returning defensive lineman for Michigan State. Uh, he's all Big Ten material. He's done a fine job tonight. Third and seven at the 21. Six defensive backs in there now for Michigan. This game has been mistake free for the most part, which is surprising in an opener. Last year's game between these two was not. He's got all the time in the world, dumps it off, and at the 30 yard line, Daryl Harris. He picked up the first down. Ron Rowe, a reserve cornerback, made the stop at the 30. Ben Rapport throws this pass to Daryl Harris underneath the coverage. But Daryl Harris does a fine job of turning that ball up the field, putting his head down, getting those extra yards, which allowed him to get the first down. So the drive stays alive at the 30. There you see Daryl Harris. Paul Day checks in. He's out of San Diego, California to give Harris a blow. The give is to the fullback. Channing Williams pounds ahead. Tim Moore made the stop. He has made a bunch of a pickup of two yards at second and eight at the 32. Clock ticks with 12.20 remaining. Tim Moore's been in on a lot of stops this evening. Hill and Cox, the wide outs. Cox splits right, Hill left. Paul Day and Channing Williams in the backfield. Day gets his first carry and he booms out over the 35 to the 36 to pick up the four. It'll be third and four at the 36. Dean Altabelli, the strong safety out of Escanaba, Michigan, made the stop. 17 all, third and four at the 36. Paul Day last year was a wide receiver. He had some problems catching the football, so they switched him back to running back, and uh, now he's getting an opportunity to play. Chris Garrett comes in with a play. He splits left, Cox right. Channing Williams in motion. It's third and four. Van Rapport wants to throw for it. It's broken up. And no flag. Intended for Stein Cause. He wanted a flag, but it's not forthcoming. Todd Crum involved in the pass coverage. And it's fourth down. That was not pass interference. Stein. Ooh. You sure? Well, I don't know. I take that back. <laughs> Bobbitt was the guy who made the hit. Mike Shue is into punt. Robert Morse is the deep man. He's averaged 41 on two previous kicks, and he got a beauty away here. Morse fields it at the 18, and he's in a world of hurt. Down he goes at the 18-yard line. A 46-yard punt, no return. So Michigan State has the ball back. We'll be right back. This is Super Football Saturday night on Turner Network Television. Well, I bet there's some parents wondering what their tuition is going for as they look in at this. <laughs> oh, that's all part of it. 17 all our score. We've got 11-17 left. First and 10 at the 18. You did that college didn't you? Not with this body. Somebody would have tried to harpoon me. <laughs> Ryzen and Ingram are flank. Yarima rolls left. Throws has a man. Perfect. Yes, Andre. Ryzen, they say, was out of bounds. Didn't get a foot down. Ryzen argues about it, but it's incomplete, and it's second and 10 at the 18. I thought he had a foot down, too, but the official was a lot closer than we are. Let's take a look and see if he got his foot down. Yeah, he did. No, he did not. I think it was on that line. Yeah, he might be right. 
I'm not going to argue with you. You're too tough. <laughs> Second down, 10 yards to go. Ryzen and Ingram. They're split. Lorenzo Whitehead. Nowhere to go, and he lost the football. Big scramble. Arizona State has it. Jim Reynosa covered it. That's only the fifth fumble in his career. He was completely hemmed in, and there's the big break of this ball game. Arizona State at the 17-yard line. Let's look, Archie Griffin. Lorenzo had nowhere to go, and what actually happened is he ran into his own man, which caused the fumble. And that is unlike Lorenzo White. He is not a fumbler at all. He had four fumbles last year and 385 carries. So that is unlike Lorenzo White. Bobby Morris actually inadvertently appeared to knock it loose. But well, it's a great chance for Arizona State. Let's see if they can catch in. They give it to Paul Day, and he gets to about the 14th. Second and seven, Mark Nichols will stop. 10.50 left in the game. Paul Day is a fresh running back in the game by looking to break one in for a score. Darren Tupper checks in to play fullback. Aaron Cox, wide right. Paul Day has the football and is nailed at the 12. It'll be third and five at the 12. Dean Altabelli made the stop. The strong state team for Michigan State. John Miller helps. Well, if you've got a special in your playbook, this would be the time to break it out. Third and five. This is the time to do it. Dean Altabelli on that last play did a great job of turning that play inside and making the stop. He had good help from John Miller. Aaron Cox and Chris Garrett are the wide receivers. Cox splits left. Garrett comes right. Tupper is the fullback. It looks like Van Rapport audible. He's going to throw for it, and he is back. Boy, there's a big play for the Spartans. That is indeed a big play. Let's see if there's a delay of game here. Dead ball, delay of the game. Delay of game is the call. Five yard penalty. In a way, that's a bad break for Michigan State. That's right. They were going to be back there anyway. And it would have been fourth down. <laughs> that's right. Now it's third and ten at the 17. Arizona State's got to get some points out of this position they're in right now. Bob Stradley is the guy who sacked the quarterback, but it's all for nothing. Third and ten. Third and ten. Daryl Harris checks back into the game at tailback. Nichols and Cox check it. Bruce Hill and Cox are the white up. And now play is halted again here with 9.35 left. The officials confer. That was a dead ball foul. Third and ten at the 17. Well, we know it was a dead ball foul. Second down. I heard somebody say it's second down. I don't think that's right, though. Sean Bola leads Michigan State in tackles with 10. Clark has 13 for Arizona State. Now, what's going on here? I think there's some confusion to what down it is. They say it's second down. It was, but it was third and five on the play before. I can't understand that. I think the officials are wrong. It was third and five at the 12. A delay of game has to make it third and 10 at the 17, unless they've changed the rules on it. I'd say that's correct. 
and the official now is checking upstairs. It should be third down, 10 yards to go at the 17-yard line. That's what's on the scoreboard, but the officials say it's second down. How can it be so hard to figure that out? Here's on the state, don't mind having another down. No, of course not. <laughs> but this is really silly. They're checking with the press box, I surmise. It was third and five at the 12. The quarterback was sacked by Bob Stradley, by Rob Stradley, but play had been halted because of a delay of game, which was a five yard penalty, and the down would remain the same, which would be third down and 10 yards to go at the 17. Now, how can these people be so confused about such a simple thing? Well, this is strange. And both teams now leave the field while the Zebras try to figure out what's going on. If they call up here, we could tell them. They've got a running play-by-play -play up in the press box. And why they can't just check that and find out it should be third and ten, I do not know. So here we sit. Archie, while we have a moment, I'm, in a way I'm glad because it gives us, it gives me a chance. A guy I've always admired, I know, is, is very close to you, and that's Woody Hayes, your former coach at Ohio State. How is he doing? Coach Hayes is doing fine. He's still very, very active. Not as active as he used to be, but he's doing well. He's still involved with a lot of community activity and doing a lot of things for the city of Columbus, Ohio. Tell the folks what you're doing now and on a full-time basis for Ohio State. Well, I'm at Ohio State, and I'm uh, assistant to the athletic director there, and I'm working mostly in fundraising and various uh, other things, and uh, I enjoy the work very much. I work with a great group of guys. Now we've got another, tele lady. another telephone conversation going on. What in the world is happening here? Van Rapport leaves the field again. This is disgraceful. You got 22 kids that want to play football. 70,000 people are watching them, and the officials can't figure out what down it is. Well, the scoreboard still says it's third down and 10, so most likely it's going to be third and 10. Now they're going to call. They're calling President Reagan to let him decide. <laughs> I guess they've tried everybody else. Now he's using two phones. <laughs> I think he's a frustrated television producer. The crowd is booing, and I don't blame him. This, there's no excuse for this. Notre Dame had three chances to win it late, couldn't get it done, but a great debut for Lou Holtz, Lou Holtz nonetheless, against him. A great team. Boy, Miami is loaded, aren't they? Texas Tech fell tonight. Alabama had some trouble, got by Southern Mississippi. LSU came from behind to beat Texas A&M 35-17. Now the officials may be about ready to go. Third down. That's a third down. Big upset. Well, it's third down. Good. We already knew that, but now we'll go back to play. It's third and ten at the 17. Now the officials have yet another meeting. It will be third and ten. The crowd doesn't even boo that announcement. Okay. Everybody in the place knew it. Okay. <laughs> well, you know the officials aren't happy about it. They don't like to get loused up like this. Both wideouts go left. Bruce Hill and. Aaron Cox, we haven't seen that formation very often tonight. From the 17 in the shotgun is just Van Rapport. And he's going to throw if he can, and he does in the end zone. Incomplete and almost intercepted. It was intended for Aaron Cox. Ron Rue almost picked it up. And it will be field goal time for Arizona State. 
Kent Bostrom will come in. Chris Garrett will hold it. Ron Rowe did a fine job of defending that play. Eddie Grant snaps on field goal situations. He's in a pressure-packed spot. So is Chris Garrett, the holder, and of course, Kent Bostrom, the kicker. A 34-yard field goal attempt from the right-hand side. The snap is there, the place is there, the kick is away, and it is good. And Arizona State reclaims the lead. It's 2017. We'll be right back. We'll kick it off. Arizona State has reclaimed the lead. They've scored the only six points of the second half. Ingram and Morris, the deep end. It was a four-play drive for no yards and a field goal. Short kick, very short kick. Up back handles it at the 20, gets to the 34-yard line. Dean Altabelli, the strong safety, came away with the ball. They're in a good position to start a drive from kick. They'll mark it at the 35, and that's where Michigan State will go to work. 9-10 remaining in our game. Archie Griffin, Skip Carey with you. From Sun Devil Stadium, 70,689 paid to see it. Standing room only. Mark Ingram flanks right. Andre Risen splits left. Morrison White are the running backs, of course. But Yarima is going to go to the air. He's got Risen complete at the 46-yard line. Greg Clark made the stop, but Yarima's got the aerial circus working again. Watch Ryzen on this pattern here. Takes off, gets into the zone, gears down, and catches the football and secures the catch. He gained 19, first and 10 at the 46. This Andre Ryzen is a fantastic athlete. You know, he played basketball, ran track, and played football. Boy, that's very State rare in this day and age. First and 10, 46. Yarima going to the air again if he can, and he does, and he finds Lorenzo White at the 39. Lorenzo White. Check it at the 44, excuse me. Scott Stephen made the stop, another short gain, second and eight. Lorenzo White has been held in check here. We have an Arizona State player, Frank Rudolph, injured. Michigan held him to 47 yards last year. He's got under 100 tonight to this point. Lorenzo's a marked man. It's going to be tough yardage every game he plays. We'll be right back. This is Super Football Saturday Night on Turner Network Television. Well, we were in air. Skip McClendon was the injured Arizona State player. We're happy to report he left the field under his own power. And they're working Second on him now on the sideline. Second and eight at the 44-yard line. For the Spartans, they're in Arizona State territory, and they trail by three. Yarima rolls right. That's been his bread and butter. Hits his fullback, Bobby Morse, but he doesn't get much down to the... 42-yard line. Greg Clark made the stop. It'll be third and six from there. Stop by number 26, Bobby Morris, and number 36, Greg Clark. That's that roll pass right. They're finding Bobby Morse in the flat in quite often. Yarima hustles back to the huddle. He's had an impressive night, but on this drive, the last two passes have gained just four yards. 7.50 remaining. Morris says... Five receptions, good for 34 yards. Possession play. Andre Risen, wide right. Ingram, the wingback. Morse starts in motion. He rolls left. He's going to be blitzed. All the way back to the 42, Greg Clark. Out of Torrance, California, 225-pound linebacker made the hit. And Michigan State will have to cough it up with 7.20 remaining. Greg Clark, one of those inexperienced inside linebackers, came through and made a big play for Arizona State. And 
Anthony Parker, the deep man. Great Montgomery will put it. That's the first time Michigan State has been sacked. That was a costly one. Great Montgomery in the front for Michigan State. Seven minutes remaining as he gets the kick away. It's a low line drive. Anthony Parker fields it at the 12. Gets to the 16, maybe the 17 yard line. Before he's knocked down by Paul Bobbitt again. So Arizona State takes over. We'll see where they mark the football. It's going to be at the 17, and now they really want to get their running game going to use the use the clock and keep possession. They have the lead and they have the ball. You know that could have been a key drive for Michigan State. Uh, they were in good field position, but did not get the uh, first down necessary to uh, keep the drive alive. Jeff Van Rapport has Channing Williams and Daryl Harris as his running back. They're in a split backfield. Van Rapport, Bart Signal. From the 17, he's throwing and incomplete and almost intercepted. Todd Crum on the coverage. Somebody broke the wrong way. It was Aaron Cox that the pass was intended for. Second and 10 at the 17 yard line. Either he broke the one wrong way or that was just not a good pass. One of the two. And really surprising that they went to the pass, but they were trying to surprise Michigan State. I would think Arizona State would try to grind yardage out with this big offensive line that they had. Running backs are running fairly well, and it uh, makes good sense to do that. Travis Davis checks in for David Wolf on the defensive line for the Spartans. Second and ten. They may be committed to the pass now. Up, they go to the run, and breaking free is Daryl Harrison. He's up across the 30-yard line. First down, Sun Devil. Dean Altabelli and John Miller made the stop, but not until he reached the 30. Shane Buller here. Oh, he gets knocked out of the hole. It gives Daryl Harris an area to run in, and Daryl Harris gets the first down. Randall McDaniel doing the good blocking there. First and 10 at the 30. That moves the chains and keeps the clock ticking. 6.20 remaining. Again, it's Daryl Harris. And again, some pretty good yardage as he makes his way to the 35. Daryl Harris is quite impressive tonight. You know, he told Coach Cooper that he could run the ball 25 times. A crack. Second and five at the 35. See, it's been all Daryl Harris so far tonight. Lorenzo White has been held well in check. Daryl's close to that 25 limit that he said he could do. 5.45 remaining in the game. Jeff Van Rapport gives to the up man, Shannon Williams, the fullback, and he's out near the 40-yard line. Just short of the first down, it will be third and one. As they unpile, George Perlis has to be concerned now. Mark Nichols made the stop. Travis Davis was in on it as well. Here's that big, strong line. That offensive line is getting some surge. They've got both tight ends in there on third and one. This is a huge play for Michigan State. They can't win the game if they don't get the ball. Van Rapport. Daryl Harris. I don't think so. It looked like Michigan State made the stop. There's your time remaining. John Buddy, Travis Davis in on the stop. Davis has played big since checking it. He is short of the first down. Fourth and less than a yard. At their own 40-yard line. A little confusion on the Arizona State sideline. Are they going to go for it here? No. Oh, I would think they'd punt this ball. I would have been shocked had they had they done it. So Mike Shue is in the kick. Robert Morris is the big man for Michigan State. No pressure on the kicker, and he gets a good one out of there. Morris is going to field it on his 10. And he's got nowhere to go. He gets to the 15, and that's it. Sante Sapulu made the stop. 405 remaining. We'll be right back.
George Perlis and his staff trying to figure out what to do. His offensive coordinator is Morris Watts. They've got 84 yards to go. They're at their own 16 with 405 left in the game. Dave Urema had a huge second quarter, but Arizona State has held him in check in the second half. Michigan State has put no points on the board. Andre Risen to the right. Mark Ingram to the left. They got to do it now, for time is their enemy. Urema will put it up. If he can, he's in trouble. It's complete to Morse at the 10. He breaks the tackle. Oh, he's buried at the 14. A penalty flag. Greg Clark, another hit. He's having a sensational game. But a flag is thrown. That Greg Clark. It might be a face mask on Robbie Boyd. Says our very capable spotter, Bill Wendell. We have a defensive face mask. Five yards. That's what it is, a five-yard penalty. That was a face mask. There it is. And it was on Robbie Boyd. 356 left, first and five at the 21. That would have been a big play for Arizona State. The Sun Devils have been penalized three times to 20 yards. First and five for Michigan State, but they need, they need points. Ingram left, rising right. Yarima goes to work. He's in the pocket. A little screen is dumped off. Lorenzo White across the 30 yard line to the 32. Plenty of room for a first down. It comes with three and a half minutes remaining in the game. So Lenny Wright made the stop. He is from Pego Pego, Samoa, Samoa. Oh, let me say Samoa once. First and ten at the 32. That was a good screen run by Lorenzo White. Uh, they let the defensive line rush, get past him, then release, got the ball, and did a good job of running. Rising is the flanker, Ingram the wing back right. Down to three minutes left in the game as Urema took too much time, I believe. Oh, what a terrible time to be doing that. Time is your enemy. Didn't have those kind of mistakes uh, with uh, three minutes left in the football game. Michigan State's got to go down and score points. It'll be first and 15 at the 27. They let a lot of time run off that clock. Mike Sargent checks back in with play inspections. Jeff Joseph play the game. becomes a fifth back for Arizona State. And Dave Urema heads back to the huddle with 3.01 remaining. Our statistician tonight, Elvin Lindblad. We thank both Bill and Elvin for their good work. Clock ticks now with 2.50. Yarima to throw. He's got time, and he has a man at the 38-yard line. It's Mike Sargent, but the clock keeps on ticking on that. Stacy Harvey made the stop. Two thirty-five left. Larry McLaughlin shaken up for Arizona State. It's second and four at the thirty-eight. McLaughlin is on one knee, as you see, and is getting plenty of attention. And he'll come off under his own power. Two thirty-five left in the game. It's 2017 Arizona State. I would expect Lorenzo. Excuse me. I would expect Urema to throw more sideline passes to make sure that the clock is stopped. It's running now with two and a half. Two twenty-five. Second down, four yards to go. The give is to Lorenzo Wright. And he didn't get much. He's short of the first down. It'll be third and three. Trace Armstrong made the stop. A junior out of Birmingham, Alabama, our part of the world. Michigan State tried that sprint draw. 
but it didn't go as you're about to see. And it came up short. Third and three at the 39, under two minutes left. They do have all their timeouts remaining. And they'll be going to them soon, but first they have to get a first down here. Yarima in trouble, has a man in the flat. It's Morse. I don't think he got it. I did not get it. Again, Greg Clark, what a game he has had for the Sun Devils. The linebacker out of Torrance, California. Morris gains only one, if that. So now it's fourth down and 139 remaining. Greg Clark made a great stop on this play by pushing Morris out of bounds. The Uriva was pressured. John Patterson checks in at defensive left tackle. It's fourth and about three. Yarima in traffic has a man and a completion. And Andre Risen at the 43 yard line. That keeps Michigan State alive. There's a penalty down on the field. There's a flag. Another flag. I think it's, well, let's see. Here's the replay, but we're looking to see who the penalty is on. Andre Risen shows great athletic ability. He goes Personal down foul the against Arizona State. Oh, boy. What a break for Michigan State. And what a time to let your temper get the better of you. That gives, that breathes more life into it. Let's listen. Well, we didn't get the... Ryzen here has been running some great patterns. He runs a shake pattern, gets in the open, goes down for the football, and makes the catch. The ball was thrown low. The play will stand. The play will stand. And let's see where they're going to mark the football. It's at the 43-yard line. Michigan State huddles up a minute 33 left in the game. They trail by three points. but dumps it off short. It's Mike Sargent. His tight end stops the clock by going out of bounds at the 39, but a gain of only four. Scott Stephen made the stop. A minute 23 remain. George Perlis talks it over with Dave Urema. Urema's trying to keep that ball at the sideline so that uh, his players can get out of bounds once they make the catch. Ryzen this time goes to the wide side of the field. Mark Ingram to the left. There's the time remaining. Yarima. Big pressure. He got it away, but incomplete. Let's see if they call intentional grounding. Jim Reynosa was the guy that got to him. I don't see a flag. I don't think that was intentional grounding, Skip. Bobby Morse was in an area where Yarima threw the football. Great pressure by Jim Reynosa. Out of Silmar, California. Bobby Morris was in that area, so that was not intentional grounding. Cottle, by the way, kicked a 49-yard field goal against Arizona State last year as Michigan State won 12-3. That was in East Lansing. Blitz, he got away from it. He's got a man at the 35, at the 30, at the 28. It's Bobby Morris. With a big first down, and I don't know how Yurima got rid of that ball. Sante Sapolo made the stop. But look at the pressure that Yurima confronted. This is heads up playing by Dave Yurima and Bobby Morse. Bobby Morse catches the ball, goes upfield. Again, it was Greg Makes Clark making the rush. We're getting down to cases here. One minute left. John Cooper looks on. You see the time. Michigan State has all its timeouts. Yarima rolls left. More pressure. Gets it away. Again, it's complete. Did he keep his feet? Morris pulls his way. Let's see if they're going to mark him down at the 18-yard line. 
44 seconds left. The clock is stopped. Stacy Harvey with a tackle. Bobby Morrison's coming through in the clutch for Michigan State. He's done a fine job of receiving the football today. And he kept his feet. And he got those extra yards. Well, they're in field goal range now, but you know they want to win. But what's most important about that play that Bobby Morris just completed was he got out of bounds. That's a great effort. They do have their three timeouts left. First and ten at the 18. Ingram in motion. Yurima's aerial circus will continue. He's got a man at the, about the eight-yard line. I think it was Ingram. And it is a completion shy of a first down. 33 seconds are all that remains. Surely they'll stop the clock here. They do. It was Ryzen who made the reception. A pickup of nine. Second and one at the nine. Ryzen made that reception, but I don't think David Urema saw. Ryzen, five receptions, 85 yards. Timeout has been called here. Here's Sergeant. He was wide open in the middle, waving his hand. Urema did not see him. Well, I'm sure Sergeant's telling him about that right now. 30 seconds left. The ball is on the nine yard line. Michigan State has taken its first time out. They have two remaining. Dave Urema has engineered some drive here. He had to make one re completion on a fourth down or this game would be in the bank for Arizona State but it certainly isn't now Arizona State a four point favorite coming in their backs are to the wall now 33 seconds left it's second and one Michigan State has 16 first downs in this game 12 of them by passing and they're serving notice to the Big Ten that they're more than just Lorenzo White. Both tight ends in now. Rich Gusevich and Mike Sargent. Second and a yard. They want to win the game. They don't want to settle for the tie. Arizona State by three. Sargent in motion. Yarima in trouble. Gets it away incomplete. It's third and one. It was intended for Mark Ingram. Greg Clark rushed the passer effectively again. They can't keep him out of there. He's tough. Here he comes. Urema did a good job of getting this ball off. He had Arizona State players all over him. Well, he has shown a remarkable ability, Archie, to stand up to that pressure and deal at the last moment. Well, now what do you do? 28 seconds left. It's a third down play with one to go. You've got two timeouts left. Ryzen comes back in and they use a timeout now. They're second. And I don't think George Perlis wanted that to happen. He did not because the clock was stopped anyway. There was no need for this. Somebody got their signals crossed for Michigan State. You can see that George is very upset. But Yarima is over to the bench. 28 seconds left. It's 20 to 17. And it's third and one. Michigan State with one timeout remaining. Arizona State with two. Michigan State's got to make the most out of this one timeout that they have left. Michigan State, five of 13 in the game on third down plays, two of seven in this half. The defensive coaches talk it over with the Arizona State kids. And there's the defensive coordinator. Larry Marmy, the bespectacled gentleman. Yurima returns to the field. Well, we're building to some finish, aren't we? 28 seconds left. Coach Cooper mentioned that Yurima would be the key to Michigan State, and he's proven it today. Rise and left, Ingram the wing back right in motion. Yarima rolls left, he's going to be blitzed. Oh, there's a big play. At the 18-yard line, Jeff Joseph, a reserve cornerback, made the hit. 
He's out of Los Angeles, a junior. Timeout, Michigan State, their last timeout. It's fourth down, and they'll almost certainly have to kick the ball now. Every time they roll left, they run into trouble. That was a big, big play for Arizona State. You know, he almost knocked the ball out of yeah, his hand. He's very that fortunate he held really on to the ball. Closer. That would have put the lights out here. Good hit by Jeff Joseph. Couldn't come at a better time for Arizona State. Chris Cottle will come on here. Pete Risco is the holder. Pat Shermer snaps it. They go for the tie. They have no choice. It's fourth and nine with 17 seconds left. Of course, they could run a fake, but boy, it would be a shocker. He kicked a 48-yarder. What pressure on a young kid. 70,000 hostile people. It all comes down to Chris Cottle. It's blocked. It's blocked, and Arizona State's going to win the game. Scott Stephen made the block. Look at John Cooper, and this place is up for grabs. 12 seconds left. No timeouts for Michigan State. Arizona State has won the game. And the kid John Cooper calls his best player, Scott Stephen, is the guy who made the block. What a finish. They begin to head for home in Tempe. Arizona State is so excited, I don't know if they'll be able to finish this game, and I don't blame them. That was a big, big play by Scott Stevens. John Cooper thanks the crowd for their support. He previously coached at Tulsa. That's the ball game. That'll do it. Seven seconds remaining. Jeff Van Rapport, a happy young man. The penalty on the play. A penalty was called. A personal foul has been called, I guess, against Michigan State. Yep. Frustration comes to the fore here. So seven seconds remain. Let's look at the block kick again. Huh? Scott Stevens makes a great play. That is a key play. And now the ball game is over. The time has run up. And your final score, Arizona State 20, Michigan State 17. This is Super Football Saturday night on Turner Network Television. Sunday on the by Buick and your Buick dealer. For comfort, innovation, and a real commitment to quality, it's today's Buick. And brought to you locally by the people who make glass containers naturally. I enjoyed working with you. The pleasure was mine. Our producer is Frank Belmont, Tom Smith, our director, and the best crew in the world from CBS. Thanks for being with us. You have a good night. 2017 Arizona State. That's the final. So long, everybody.